One day, my neighbor caught me by surprise and asked me to tell him a story that he said would illustrate the ethics of your religion. A story that he said would persuade me and help me appreciate Islam. The question completely startled me, but I quickly realized the famous story about an imam in London. Several years ago, an imam moved to London. He used to take the same bus every single day with the same driver to a stop near his mosque. One day as he was riding, he paid the bus fare and sat down, realizing that the driver had mistakenly given him an additional 40 pence. When the imam sat down, he considered keeping the extra change since it was an insignificant amount anyway. But as he was deboarding, he felt guilty and handed the 40 pence back to the driver and said, Sir, I think you gave me too much change. The driver smiled and said, aren't you the new imam in this area? You know, lately I've actually been thinking about stopping by your mosque and learning about Islam. But before I did that, I wanted to see what you would do if I gave you extra change. As the imam stepped off of the bus, he was so shaken by the incident that he grabbed the pole, looked up to the sky and cried out, Oh Allah, I almost sold Islam for 40 pence. My neighbor said, let's face it though. If it was a significant amount of money, the Imam would have kept it. I insisted that this was the inherent nature of the Muslim and he would have given it back even if it was 40,000 pounds. But he shook his head in disapproval indicating he wasn't impressed. I didn't think that my neighbor thought much of the Imam story. I thought he'd probably forgotten about it by the next day. Little did I know that just as the bus driver tested the Imam, my neighbor wanted to test me by leaving a bag of a ton of money in the parking garage. I had no clue he was watching. I must admit, it was a whole lot of money, but I really didn't think twice about it. I acted in accordance with what my conscience and religion commanded me to do, knowing that if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in my shoes, he would have done the same. I had to find a way to get it back to its owner. I posted signs, I made calls, but got absolutely no response. People must have thought it was some kind of scam. My neighbor says to me, Muslims can't be tempted, huh? I knew you'd give in and spend the money. So I told him what happened. I'm not here to defend myself, I said. But what I'd really like to do is teach you what our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us. I gave him the donation receipt from the charity to which I donated the money and informed him that the car I was driving was actually my uncle's car which I was borrowing because my car had to be fixed. So then I asked him, have you filed your taxes for the year yet? I think we should get this receipt to your CPA. Imagine having a nasty neighbor that verbally abuses you in every conceivable way. But despite all of that abuse, when he travels or has to find someone to watch his precious valuables, he trusts no one more than you because he knows your integrity. That was our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As we walked back home that day, my neighbor thanked me for the time we spent together, telling me I completely changed his perception of Islam and its Prophet. I then shared with him that it was our Prophet who said, honor the trust of those who give it to you and do not betray the one who betrays you. What caught my attention is that my neighbor was willing to test me with such a huge amount of money just to test my decency as a Muslim. Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal fa'abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan innahu kana zaluman jahula. I hope that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have been proud of how I responded. Rasulullah, we testify that you have fulfilled your trust and convey to us the message. We only pray that we can continue to convey on your behalf without betraying your trust.